truth be told, my huge, huge, big goal for the year in my quest for building passive income streams while helping people, I hope, in the process is a whopping $30,000. After six months of working my you know what off, I earned a grand total of $8,280, which puts me on track for $16,560, which would be $14,000 less than my big goal. And you know what? I'm still freaking proud of that. Today, I'll explain exactly how I earned that $8,280 and my plans for the second half of the year. I'm not going to adjust my goal, but I have mentally adjusted my expectations. My new, still tough goal is to double my first half results in the second half of 2021. Looking at my income tracker, which you can clone and use yourself, link below, you can see I was able to grow it every month except for June, and I'm hoping to increase every month as a sub goal going forward. If you average the second quarter of the year, it gets me to $1,741. If I do that in Q3 and Q4, I'll earn another $10,500. But again, I have plans to scale it more, all revealed towards the end of today's video. So let's discuss. First, I'll cover what happened in June. You may remember if you've seen my April passive income video that I received a one-time monthly bonus from Medium, which is my blogging platform of choice. It's kind of like YouTube of blogging. Out of nowhere, they decided to give their top 1,000 writers in terms of user engagement $500. I had one article go viral in late April, and it stayed in the algorithm long enough to earn me that bonus once again in May. However, despite publishing 16 articles in June, which is six more than May, I didn't earn that $500 bonus last month. I did earn a $100 bonus for being in the top 1,000 to 1,500, and I'm super proud of that because I was consistent and I had no viral articles. I had to earn that by rolling up my sleeves and really getting after it. It was a grind, but I think I got better as a writer and I learned a ton. They are offering that bonus for one more month in June, but I haven't found myself finding as much time to write on Medium. That's because I've been more focused on YouTube projects and planning a wedding that's 60 days away now. So I dove right in and already covered Medium. Year to date, Medium has earned me close to $2,000 of that 8,000 roughly, the bulk of it coming in the last three months. But let's tackle my top stream of passive income, the one I pour 30 hours a week into, YouTube. YouTube is a tough nut to crack. There's no sugarcoating it. I started this channel in early 2019 as I was launching my first book. I posted 36 all over the place videos in year one. In year two, I committed to a video a week and I posted 54. This year, I'm on track to achieve my goal of 100 videos in total. So far, I haven't missed an upload. This is video 59, I believe, which is 58 publicly. One of them is currently private and I'm waiting till September to release that very special video. So do subscribe if you wanna see that one. On screen now, I'll go month by month so you can see how my Google ad revenue has changed over time. January and February were steady at around $500. By the way, I was monetized last September, so those are months five and six of earning ad revenue. And I started the year at 2,700 subscribers for perspective. March scaled, April was even stronger, but the YouTube algorithm giveth and taketh away. It's been a little bit softer here in May and June, despite having 4,800 and 5,500 subscribers to start those months. By the way, subscribers do not equal revenue or guaranteed eyeballs. Over 83% of my views are from non-subscribers this year, and the bulk of my revenue actually still comes from videos that are a year or two old, ones that are super friendly to search. Specifically, it's my videos about pet insurance, honey, credit cards, Costco, and several about Amazon. So that's the gist of YouTube. Let's hop to my third best stream of passive income. My first actually, Kindle Direct Publishing. I won't bore you with the details on this one, but I have self-published two personal finance books. January through March were steady. In April, I got exciting news that my first book was selected by Amazon for their Prime Reading program, making it free for Prime members. I love that exposure, so I of course accepted the invite, but I obviously took a hit in sales despite launching hardcovers for both books that month. Here's what you need to know about KDP and self-publishing if you're considering it. You won't get rich from self-publishing. You actually might just break even or even lose money when you consider the cost to produce the book and possibly run ads. But it's incredibly satisfying. You learn a ton, you find your voice, it builds authority, and you'll always be able to say that you did it. Plus, 
you might be able to launch a brand after doing so and use your books more like your business card to get people in the door of your ecosystem. Seriously, I always travel with copies of my books and give them away if I end up chatting it up with a stranger. Plus, they both reference specific YouTube videos of mine and my course throughout. My next best source of passive income this year has come from dividends. This is from investing. It's essentially cash you earn from companies just for being invested in them. A small little thank you, a little tip if you will, for the support. The bulk of dividends you'll earn is at the ends of the quarters. So I earned almost nothing outside of March and June this year. Those are only dividends, by the way, from my Roth IRA, traditional IRA, and some small individual investing. If you're wondering, I use M1 Finance for all my investing that isn't my 401k, and I dabble a tiny amount with public, and I did review that app, so check out that video if you're curious to learn more. I recommend it as a favorite overall, but I don't invest in individual companies often, so I stick with M1 Finance and my pies over there. My course, Save Money Resolution, is next, which you can find at themoneyresolution.com. It teaches you how to save your first or next $10,000 fast. Nearly 100 people have tried out the free preview, but courses are really hard to sell when you have a small audience, especially when you put it on your own platform, I learned. It's a few hundred bucks so far this year, but I didn't have super high expectations since I chose not to put it on the bigger course sites that might help promote it, such as a Udemy. Instead, I wanted to create a new website anyway, and I was drawn to using Kajabi for that because it's an all-in-one solution. I can host courses with Kajabi. I can make it a membership site with community features. It's a blog and email service provider. And recently they actually announced a couple new features like podcast hosting in an area for coaching clients. The course was really a way to learn Kajabi and all it can do. I love the look and feel of my site and I'll definitely re-up for another year. If Kajabi sounds interesting to you, they are actually running a summer special promotion right now. If you use my link below, you can get 90 days for just $99 or the standard, of course, two week free trial. As a fun win using Kajabi this year, 700 people have actually signed up to my email list as I'm able to leverage Kajabi to quickly and easily create landing pages with forms to download free useful content like that income tracker I mentioned. Amazon Associates and ACX, which is my audiobooks, are basically neck and neck and bring up the rear with just $120 or so each. While only a couple of hundred dollars, these are both basically hands off. I send people to Amazon using links in my description, earning me a small percentage of sales as commission. And my audiobooks were, I don't know, 10 hours or so of work, maybe more. But once done, much like a book, they have the potential to earn me a small check each month for many years to come. But nothing super interesting to update here otherwise. So that's the gist of how I got to that $8,000 in passive income. I am off track for my goals, like I said, but grateful and excited and still potentially on track for my other big goal of 10,000 subscribers here on YouTube by the end of the year. It's really a vanity metric as you learned, but it would be incredibly satisfying to reach five figures. But let's discuss what's next, how I intend to double my passive income in the second half of the year. And there's two big things that are gonna take up the bulk of my attention outside of consistency with these videos and articles on Medium. The second one is the one I'm really excited about, but the first one is my third book. I announced it a month or two ago in a video and really appreciated all of you that filled out the survey to give me your opinion on things like the book title, when to launch the book, and more. The book is just something I have to do. Once it gets in your brain, your heart, your soul, it really takes over. It's the most difficult and most satisfying thing you can do in my opinion. YouTube videos are amazing, but you can't hold them in your hands. Well, I guess kind of. <laughs> you can't sell it on a store shelf, which is a dream of mine. You can't autograph a YouTube video. Plus there's nothing like the feeling of book launch day. It's like your own personal Super Bowl. It's incredible. It's gonna be all about the FIRE movement, that's financial independence, retire early. It's everything I've learned studying it, making videos about it, and ultimately getting on the FIRE path in the last year or so. I'll make the big argument for saving half of your income because if you do so, you can retire in as little as 17 years. Now, I don't expect huge sales, but I also have never had more than 700 subscribers when I launched a book, so who knows? Maybe the first month can get on an Amazon bestseller list, that isn't specific to my very specific niche like before. So let's show Amazon it's a winner and see if I can get them to support this new book organically. By the way, I'll link to that survey I mentioned below if you'd like to fill it out. 
it would really help me out. Finally, the one I'm most excited to talk about, sponsors. Because my pet insurance video has earned the most revenue and it's a topic I'm super passionate about, I decided to do a follow-up video this year. Before doing so though, I reached out to my pet insurance company to see if they'd like to get involved and another company, Pop, reached out and I fell in love with their emergency only service for $19 a month. Both companies actually got on board and they set me up with their affiliate programs. Now I won't discuss the specifics here, but basically this is far more lucrative in terms of passive income than just dropping refer a friend links or Amazon affiliate links in the description like I usually do. I don't wanna get into the details or results and I'm not sure if I will going forward, but this really opened up my eyes to finding more sponsors and partners. In studying other videos like this one and listening to podcasts on the topic, I continue to hear that sponsorships and brand deals are where many YouTubers actually earn the bulk of their revenue. The light bulb went off exploring these new affiliate dashboards, so I decided to blindly reach out to several other brands in the networks. A few more have accepted me into their programs, and these are brands I already use and love. I'll never bring on a partner or sponsor as a cash grab, absolutely not. But I will be excited to work with brands and partners that I believe in, that I use, and that are willing to meet with me and discuss one-on-one -on -one because I like to know the people behind the brands as well. So this year is fairly different than expected so far. Going into year one, I plan to make three more courses. I won't. <laughs> I thought YouTube revenue might scale to $3,000 or $4,000 a month if I hit my big goal of 100 videos and put all my effort into each of them. I said I'm definitely not writing a book this year. I was actually supposed to be in two documentaries and I'm not convinced either is happening. Brand sponsorships weren't on my radar. I thought you had to have a 10,000 subscribers or even 50,000 subscribers for brands to wanna to work with you. So obviously six months later, so much has changed but I am super excited about the book and I'm really excited to work with brands I know and love in a way that isn't pushy or salesy. Honestly, that new pet insurance video took a month and dozens of hours because I was so nervous about how it would come off, but I'm really happy with how it turned out and I had a blast doing it. I've really enjoyed the challenges that this year has brought as well as the successes and I'm excited to keep learning and keep finding ways to grow my brand and as a side bonus, grow my passive income. But I get most excited to share honestly how it's going, what I've learned and hopefully be able to help others out there so they don't make some of the same mistakes. Okay. That was a lot and mostly stream of consciousness. If you have questions, fire away. I definitely love questions. If you have any feedback on any of this, please do share, I take it all to heart. If you learned something or just wanna say thanks for the full transparency, I totally dig that as well. I do my best to reply to every comment because the community is the reason I pour so much into YouTube and really all of this. I hope you'll subscribe and tune in for the journey in the second half of the year so you can grow along with me. Feel free to make a copy of this tracker if you want some help organizing your income streams for free. It's also great for contractors out there. I think you'll really dig it. Like this video if you got value out of it. Thank you so much for your time as always. My name is Frankie. This is The Money Resolution. You all are freaking awesome as always for getting to the end and I hope to see you friends in a few days on the next one. Thanks. Oh. And best of luck if you're working on your own passive income streams. I'd really love to hear about it.